UTRGV men's soccer experiencing early success. We show you how three veterans from the UTB soccer team have come over and made an early impact. Speaking of soccer players that know each other well, how about the sister-sister act on the UTRGV women's soccer team? The UTRGV volleyball team won a tournament. We have full coverage. And we take a look at UTRGV athletics recently redone weight room. All that and more coming up inside this edition of V Nation. That's V for Valley. V for Victory. And V for Vaqueros. This is V Nation. Hey everyone and welcome to V Nation, I'm Jonah Goldberg. The University of Texas Rio Grande Valley men's soccer team entered its first home tournament since 1996 on a three-match winning streak and four-match unbeaten streak dating back to 1997. And with an incredibly physical and athletic Buffalo team leading off the tournament, that streak seemed to be in jeopardy. But nobody told that to the Vaqueros. With his team down 1-0 after a penalty kick, Leo Castillo went into lockdown mode. In his first start for UTRGV, Castillo made eight saves, often on difficult shots and angles. Now the Vaqueros need to score. Midway through the second half, Alex Ochoa ahead to Ole Tinkanen, and there's Isidro Martinez with the finish. The Texas High School 6A Player of the Year from the spring has his first collegiate goal. That ties the match at one, which is exactly where it stays. The Caros play the Bulls to a double overtime draw. It's a, it's a good experience because we knew it was a, it was a tough team, but uh, the guys, everyone, the teammates, everyone, even the coaching staff told us that we could manage this, this game to our potential. You can see right away they're a very strong team, very well coached. They came in here, I think 3-0, and oh, and on a roll they got some very talented players. Um, I, you, know, you, you can see as well they came out to, to make sure they pressured us, and in the first half we weren't ready for it. You know, the first half, our lack of experience right now, we're a brand new team, this is still only three weeks in. You know, we got caught, we weren't able to really get into our rhythm, and we did make one mistake and it cost us with a penalty. Credit to them, they put us under that pressure and earned it. But right, right from that moment, we struggled, but once we got into the, the break at half time, we were able to settle down the guys and talk to them about what we were still trying to do on the field. I, I thought we did a tremendous job in the second half. And you could see, you know, our talent, you could see the way we're trying to play. And, you know, there were chances in there. It was, it was a fantastic equalizer by Isidro Martinez. And we had chances there to almost win it too. So fantastic credit to the boys to come back from what could have been a very tough position, you know, being 1-0 down. UTRGV closing out the Rio Grande Valley Invitational against IPFW. 15 minutes in, Isidro Martinez ahead to Carlos Acevedo. And Sammy Titanin puts it in. One Nilva Caros. Martinez was part of the all-tournament team. Final five minutes of regulation. UTRGV with the corner kick. IPFW trying to clear it. But Archie Masin steals it and ties the game. Let's take another look at that goal. Great effort for the senior co-captain who earned all-tournament team and defensive MVP honors. But IPFW scores in the final minute to beat UTRGV 3-2. This is a horrible feeling to lose, you know. What, 50 seconds left, you know, it's, it's horrible. So now, you know, we learn from this. We, we've got a busy, uh, a hard week ahead of us. You know, we get to travel again next week and the games come quick. So we need to just get back in the training grounds, work hard. And we're, we're, we're going to learn from this, you know. It's, we're a young side, so coach told us, you know, it's, it's, going, it's going to come. So as long as we keep working at it, stick to our philosophy, you know, the win's going to come. It was a very tough game, uh, again, against a very tough opponent. And, you know, we're going to expect to see a lot of that you know, during the course of the season, and we have to understand how we can move forward and adapt. You know, we were certainly exhausted and fatigued from the Friday night's game, um, but we've got to find a way to manage, you know, the, the games when we play on the weekend. Um, the boys did a tremendous job in many areas. We just weren't consistent enough through the 90. You know, it was great to see the character as well, just to come back, um, you know, and get that equalizing goal in the last uh, five minutes. So it certainly felt like a kick in the teeth. Um, to turn around two minutes later and, and, and concede the, you know, the third goal. So they have to understand that you know, we, we've got to focus. It's a 90-minute game. 
you can't go ahead and, and, and switch off. And I think we did that. Um, you know, I, I, when we're only three weeks old, I think there's still a lot of things that we're still learning and putting into process. And unfortunately, you know, it came back and cost us tonight. One of the reasons for UTRGV men's soccer's strong start is that while, by very definition, all of the student athletes are new, they're not all new to each other. Romeo Villarreal has the story. Leadership, experience, and chemistry. These are the three qualities Coach Lee knew he was getting when he recruited three UT Brownsville players, Juanito Garcia, Carlos Acevedo, and Archie Mason, to be part of the first class of UTRGV soccer players. Well, I think first of all, all three of them are tremendous young men. Um, the added bonus that we're getting is obviously having guys who have a little bit of experience. Um, you know, we've got two rising juniors, so they've had two years college play, um, and Archie Masson is a rising senior. So the guys bring a little bit of experience and maturity, and one of the things that for us being a brand new program, those guys have been in this area for the last two or three years, they're familiar with the surroundings, the environment, um, and having that I guess leadership has really helped us. For guys who are coming in um, in their first year, they're trying to settle in. They're trying to adjust to their new surroundings. These guys don't have to adjust. They've been here already for a, a couple of years. The three UT Brownsville athletes have always shared a strong bond with each other, so they were ecstatic to find out that they'd all made the team. Well, we had we had uh, kind of conversations before, so um, it was nothing new, you know, but of course I, I love them having around. I always have. Um, they're my, my brothers from since day one, so it's, it's amazing having them here. These friends knew that playing for UTRGV would mean much more than just a step up to the Division I level, but also they would set the tone for UTRGV soccer for years to come. Well, firstly, I was very excited to be a part of this new team. I knew I would be part of history coming into this D1 program, so I was excited uh, personally and, and also I knew that Coach Lee was, was going to be the coach and, and he was going to bring a lot of new things to the, to the Valley and uh, to us personally. After UTB completed their final season, they soon spoke to Coach Lee and knew after their first talk with Coach that this is where they wanted to continue their soccer careers. When I spoke to Coach you know, the first time, I already knew that I wanted to be here. You know, he, he was uh, very knowledgeable in in what he was telling me and the, his philosophy is uh, what, what he told what he told me and the other boys was it was fantastic you know and as soon as I I'd heard that you know I knew this is the only place for me really so as soon as soon as we had spoken the first time you know it was pretty much a sure sure decision for me so for V Nation this is Romeo Viedio. UT RGV women's soccer also with some familiarity on the team and it's not just the fact that it's a second year program with a strong core of returners. We send it back out to Romeo on the soccer beat. Sisters Erica and Arnel Gonzalez both helped to make up UTRGV women's soccer's tough defensive front. Last year was the first year the two sisters weren't playing together on the same team, with Arnel still being in high school at the time. When I found out my sister made the team, I was so excited. I've been playing with her since I was like in third grade. So, you know, it's, uh, it's unusual not having her on my team. Last year was the first year like of my life basically that I didn't play with Erica and so it was super weird and like having to like trust another goalie was like so different and it's just like a lot better to play with her again. Having played together for so long has helped the girls to have a thorough understanding of how one another plays and how best to work with each other out on the field. We work really well. I would say we give each other a certain look and we know what we're going to do. I guess that's just like a sister relationship. <laughs> Um, I think we work better together than, than like other people just because we've played together for so long and just because she's my sister. Yeah, I definitely think that we have the same uh, mindset when it comes to defending. Uh, and uh, I think we play really well together, so hopefully I'll see her on the field. For V Nation, this is Romeo Villarreal. After a tough 2-0 loss at Mississippi Valley State, UTRGV women's soccer closed out the weekend road trip with a 2-2 double overtime draw at rival Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Leah Irvine and Megan Oram with their first career goals. Andrea Barrera had an assist. Three weeks of women's soccer in the books, and here's what the WAC standings look like. The Caros are back home this weekend to host their second tournament of the season, facing South Dakota and Houston Baptist. UTRGV volleyball recently completed a four-match homestand, including a strong showing at their tournament. Next on V Nation, highlights from the week that was in UTRGV Volleyball.
Alpha Building Corporation is a proud sponsor of the Vaqueros. Alpha Building Corporation, creating environments where great things happen. It takes a certain kind of bravery to be part of something new and bold and daring, to go where nobody's gone before. The hard work, the countless hours of preparation, both physically and mentally, they all lead to that moment, that moment when the countdown starts. Three, two, one. The University of Texas Rio Grande Valley volleyball team got off to a pretty good start in their first tournament of the season, and this past weekend, they played four straight at home. Starting against Texas A&M Corpus Christi, and the first set was all the Caros. Early on, it's Alicia Watson with kills not once, not twice, but thrice. It's 5-2 Vaqueros, Watson had 11 kills. Later on, the Vaqueros lead is 14-12, make it 15-12. Courtesy of Boyana Mitrovic. That wasn't it by any means for Mitrovic, as she makes it 19-15 and 23-18. 19 kills for Mitrovic, but after taking the first set, the Karos fall on three. You know, I thought we came out and started really well. We passed the ball well, stayed in system, and, and did the things we were supposed to do. Uh, game two, serve receive completely broke down, and we made some mistakes. And, and then we just never really got back on track after that. Uh, just too many errors on our side of the court. I expect us to come and, you know, we kind of strayed from our, you know, our system whenever things got tough. So I think that this weekend we're going to work really hard in practice just so when the going gets tough, we're going to stay disciplined and just work on getting those routine balls and handling those to our best. Over the weekend, UTRGV Volleyball hosted a tournament and in the first match against Incarnate Word, Haley Durham broke out. The senior had 11 kills with no errors on 500 hitting to go with four blocks. Meanwhile, Tina Sekulich had a double-double with 28 assists and 13 digs in her first start of the season. The Vaqueros fall 0-3. That night, however, the Vaqueros turned the tables. Alicia Watson was on fire in the first set. At one point, she had five kills to power a 9-0 run to make it 19-10 Vaqueros. They take the set 25-13. Watson had 12 kills. You think that's cool? Just wait. Second set, the Vaqueros were up 9-8. And here we go again with Fatumata da Costa coming up with six kills to fuel a 16-2 run to close out the set. And in the final set, it's match point. Watson serving, and it's all elementary. Vaqueros win with a clean sweep. I think my coach has busted me a lot. You know, um, I, he's patient. So at the beginning, it wasn't easy. I was getting frustrated, but he just, you know, he tried to help me until I get through it. So right now, I think I'm ready. Uh, you know, we are a lot more disciplined in system. So then the 50-50 the balls rolled our way early on, and, and we got some momentum. And then just overall, I thought we played with a lot more energy than we did this morning. and and got a huge spark off the bench from Fatima. Uh, she came in and you know, lit it up starting in game two and, and really got us on her big roll. Final match of the tournament, UTRGV taking on San Jose State. And the opening set was all Vaqueros. Alicia Watson gets UTRGV on the board. Then it's Boyana Mitrovic. The story of this set though was the serving. Haley Durham with the ace there to make it 8-4. And then Mitrovic records an ace to make it 13-6. Fatumata da Costa had one to put UTRGV up 21-11. And then at the end of the set, it's Mitrovic not once, but twice. Five aces in the set, three for Mitrovic. Vaqueros win 25-16. The Vaqueros dropped the second set, but came out firing in the third. Alicia Watson with back-to-back -back kills to make it 5-0. And then Watson serves up an ace to make it 8-1. A little later, it's 15-5 when Mitrovic slams it down. The Caros by 11, they take the set 25-17. After San Jose State takes the fourth set, we move on to the decisive fifth, and Mitrovic leaves no doubt. Comes up with four kills in the set, including two at the very end. She was the MVP of the tournament, as UTRGV wins 3-2 to clinch the tournament championship. Okay, now we find out what kind of team we are finally, and how much we shown tonight. I'm so proud of every single girl in this team and our coaches. 
Like, I, I really don't know what to say. Like, my heart is huge right now because it's the first time that we went here and played, actually, and showed how big team we're going to be. You know, we started doing things the right, the right way. We talked about that after the Incarnate World match, that we weren't playing our system. We weren't really playing as a team. We just thought that we were good enough to go out there and play as individuals and be better than people. And I think that Incarnate World match was kind of a wake-up to the girls and, and some of them new to this level. And they really saw how disciplined they need to be and they started doing those things and, and good things start rolling our way. We're so comfortable with it. You know, obviously every good result is just that much more reason to trust what he has for us. And I think we, you know, it's however many hours a week that we're putting blood, sweat and tears on this floor. And, you know, I just, I trust in everything that he tells us to do. And it's, I mean, it's working, so. The UTRGV men's basketball schedule is out and it features 29 games leading up to the WAC tournament, 10 of which are against 2015 postseason participants. Those opponents include New Mexico State, North Dakota State, North Florida, UTEP, Seattle, Grand Canyon, and Tennessee Martin. The Vaqueros open the season November 13th in Miami and play their home opener on November 20th against Texas A&M Kingsville. WAC play starts January 7th. It's always a process when you're trying to get enough home games and get enough, you know, equal level starts where teams come back and forth and play you. We've got to make a little money for the university, so we play a couple guarantee games on the road, and that's what UM and UTEP are doing for us and the Utah State Tournament. And then uh, just trying to find competition that will prepare us for the WAC and give our, our, our home crowd an opportunity to see us play also before the WAC season starts. The UTRGV women's basketball schedule is also out and has the Vaqueros playing 28 games leading up to the WAC tournament, nine of which are against teams that played in the postseason last year, including New Mexico State, Oklahoma State, CSU Bakersfield, Eastern Michigan, Kansas State, and TCU. The Vaqueros open the season on November 13th at the Islander Classic before playing the home opener against Concordia on November 16th. Black play starts January 7th. We have a really tough schedule. We're at TCU, we're at Kansas State, we're at Oklahoma State, we're at Santa Barbara, we're at Eastern Michigan, we're at Incarnate Word. We're playing, uh, we're playing a very tough uh, schedule, uh, schedule tournament at Texas A&M University Corpus Christi. I mean, we just have a tough schedule. We've got University of Houston on the road, all on the road. I've got 18 road games, 11 at home. So we're, we're definitely going to have to be road warriors if we're going to have a great season. Strength and conditioning is a big part of the student athlete experience. And thanks to some generous donations, the UTRGV Athletics weight room recently got a major facelift. Coming up inside V Nation, we take a look at the new weight room. UTRGV Cross Country opened up its season at home this past weekend with a 5K duel against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Jose Juan Wells, an all-whack honoree last season, led UTRGV on the men's side by coming in fourth with a time of 16.03. Jennifer Zapata led UTRGV on the women's side by coming in third with a time of 19.06, just a step ahead of Talia Polanco and Teresa Sova. The Vaqueros are back in action on Friday at Rice. This past summer, several supporters of UT Rio Grande Valley Athletics stepped up to help modernize the athletic strength and conditioning facility. And although I'm certainly not one found around the gym too often, even I'm blown away by how good everything looks. Romeo Villarreal has more. This summer, UTRGV renovated its weight room thanks to generous donations made by Pan American alums Gilbert Enriquez, Dan Martinez and his wife Terry, Tim Tully, and Dick Tate, removing most of their old equipment and replacing it with a new array of equipment, allowing more people to work out in the room at the same time and also giving student athletes more options for how they want to work out. Everything in the room is brand new. We just kept a very minimal amount of stuff. Um, we added seven rack and a halfs uh, from Sornex exercise equipment. Um, that's going to allow us to get uh, roughly 28 people in here uh, and have them in an environment where they, it's only them and a partner sharing just about everything in the room. Um, at each station, they can bench, they can squat, pull-ups, dips, and even dumbbell work at their own station. Now since we were able to get new equipment, new things, everything runs smoothly, we're able to do a lot more different exercises and a lot of different exercises added on to the old ones because we have better equipment. So better equipment, everyone comes in here to get better, you do a better job on the court, on the field, wherever your uh, talents are. 
With the renovations taking place during the summer, returning players were blown away by the changes made while they were gone. My thoughts when I first saw the waiver, I thought it was really nice. Uh, you can, it's well deserved for all the athletes. Everybody works hard, and we just hope that it can. It, it, we don't have to get to a point where everything's like falling apart. It's getting rusty. Everyone take care of it. For the most part, everyone does take care of it. He let us know the rules. We don't put metal plates on the on the orange thing and stuff like that. And we we really respect that his domain because we didn't. They didn't have to do that for for the athletes, but they did. So we really appreciate it, and I and I really love it. Oh, it's it's a huge change. The kids are definitely excited about it. Um, like I said, we did it over the summer when everyone was gone. Um, they saw pictures on line but the pictures don't really do it justice um, when they all came in they're all excited about it um, you know, so having that new stuff again it's it, it's it's setting the tone for us for a new year a new university and the start of something special for v nation this is romeo vandial want to help prepare our student athletes for excellence in life then it's time to become a part of something bigger and support v nation by joining the v club all of the proceeds go directly to student athlete scholarships, so visit utrgvnation.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. We strive to achieve excellence through determination and hard work. We are committed to winning from those around us. Our professors and peers. Our coaches and teammates. And our opponents. We compete with integrity and passion. And we seize our moment when the opportunity arises. We take pride in our communities and believe that we can inspire others just as they have inspired us. We may wear different colors, but we share the same purpose. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western, Western Athletic, Athletic Conference. Conference. It takes a certain kind of bravery to be part of something new and bold and daring, to go where nobody's gone before. The hard work, the countless hours of preparation, both physically and mentally, they all lead to that moment, that moment when the countdown starts. Three, two, one. Plenty coming up in the world of UTRGV athletics this week, although most of it's on the road. At home is women's soccer, hosting its second tournament of the season by taking on South Dakota on Friday and Houston Baptist Sunday. UTRGV men's soccer makes an East Coast swing through UNC Greensboro and Presbyterian. Volleyball's off to the Islander Classic to face host Texas A&M Corpus Christi twice and Texas Southern once. Also in Corpus Christi is women's tennis, which opens its season at the Islanders Open. A few hours up the road will be cross country at the Rice Invitational, and then both golf teams open their seasons with the men in Illinois State and the women at Utah Valley. Our complete schedule you can visit GoUTRGV.com. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in V Nation this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then, we play for you! strive to achieve excellence through determination and hard work. We are committed to winning from those around us. Our professors and peers. Our coaches and teammates. And our opponents. We compete with integrity and passion. And we seize our moment when the opportunity arises. We take pride in our communities. And believe that we can inspire others just as they have inspired us. We may wear different colors, but we share the same purpose. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the, the Western, Western Athletic, Athletic Conference. Conference. It takes a certain kind of bravery to be part of something new and bold and daring, to go where nobody's gone before. The hard work, the countless hours of preparation, 
both physically and mentally. They all lead to that moment, that moment when the countdown starts. Three, two, one, 